right. Hello, everyone. So this is part two of building a scavenger deck. So if you're just joining, go watch part one first so you can see why we're at where we're at with this build. Um, but otherwise, we're just going to kind of pick up. We would finished with uh, starships, I guess. Um, so we still have to do red cards, basically. Um, I do want to quickly go back because when we were doing characters, I forgot to look at characters that have ability of zero, aka droids. So I'm going to do that really quick. Um, so equals zero. Um, quickly, 2x7, 2x7 KPR. Um, Something under nighttime conditions, Imperials and aliens of the same planet are power plus two and immune to attrition less than three. There is actually probably a decent nighttime conditions deck that uses like this guy plus Defel, who can hide under nighttime conditions. Um, I don't really know what else you would do with it. This guy's not going to get played in this deck. Uh, power droid, not worth it not very good fx7 or fx10 once per turn when you're hit non-droid characters can go to your use pile rather than a lost pile so you can kind of recirculate characters but there's not a lot of cards getting hit um really so we'll skip that timer mines are no probe droid is i believe the only spy on dark side um he deploys only if you have a Star Destroyer on table, so there is a deployment restriction. And then once during each of your control phase, you may peek at X cards randomly selected from the opponent's hand, where X equals the number of light side icons at the same site. You may force strain in a shape battle and be battled. So deploy two, forfeit five, power two, armor three isn't terrible. These cards are actually pretty good. It's just this deployment restriction of having to have a Star Destroyer on table to be able to deploy and like, if they're able to kill your Star Destroyer, you can't deploy more. Um, you would probably play like a bunch of probe droids and then actually probably just put undercover on all of them to block force strains anywhere um, is what you would probably do. Because if it's undercover and it goes to a site that like, because it could deploy to like a 2-0 site on your opponent's side, um, but you can't deploy there because this droid doesn't have presence. But if you put undercover on it, then it has essentially presence and you can deploy there. So you probably still play probe droids with undercover. Um, not for this deck, but there's probably some type of like a probe droid deck. Some terrible astromech droid. Another terrible astromech droid. Um, R2Q2 is also a terrible astromech droid but he actually has an ability that could be somewhat relevant um, aside from doing something with power on starfighters. Uh, it's when at a scomp link during your deploy, during your draw phase, may use one force to peek at the top three cards of your reserve deck. So it helps you with tracking. So you wanna make sure that, and more specifically, there's some type of a Cloud City Casino, Barkwin Dan, Cloud City Sabak, Trooper Sabak deck. And then this guy, this R2Q2 can play into that deck. So you can like look at the top three cards of your um, like draw deck. And then you'll be able to um, see what they are. So you can like know if you need to like cycle cards or lose a card off the top to a four strain or something because you want to set up a six and a five um so that you can get perfect sabak and then you retrieve cards or you and you make your opponent lose their two cards that they drew so long as they didn't also have perfect sabak so our two q2 can just kind of help you smooth out your tracking if you're either one not really good at tracking or if you just want to make sure that your tracked cards are where they're supposed to be, um, he can kind of help you with that. So he's not the absolute worst like some of the other astromech droids, but 
you know, is what it is. This guy's pretty bad, and he can only work on a non-creature vehicle. Um, don't bother with that guy. Same with this guy. He can, if board your ship that's been hit by ion cannons, it's like, no thanks. Not, not interested. Really, the only card <laughs> we're going to be looking at here is Wed 1517 Septoid Droid. Power 1, Deploy 3, forfeit, his forfeit is a star. His forfeit value begins at 7. When forfeited, Droid remains in play unless hit, but forfeit value is reduced by the amount of attrition or battle damage absorbed. Droid loss when forfeit value reaches 0. So you put him as a passenger on your Blizzard Walker or on your Victory Class Star Destroyer, and then you know they draw 5 for Destiny. Rather than lose your character, you just remove 5 forfeit off your septoid droid and he stays around it's not like you have to actually sacrifice him until he runs out of forfeit so um he's a way for you to like carry forfeit across multiple turns battling so i'm actually gonna put him put one into this deck we may end up cutting him but he's a not a terrible card he's actually pretty good um so, okay, that was that. So we're going to go to, you know, there's no Admiral Orders. We already did characters. There's not really any, oh, I have to reset this. Um, Bubo is a creature that we could play. He's fine. Um, habitat planet sites, so fine except hoth which you know two of our planet sites are going to be on hoth so we would kind of have to hope that our opponent's going to be playing on tatooine um or endor does not attack your characters which is great so he's not gonna he's only attacking your opponent's stuff when a job is palisade prevents opponent's characters from using their land speed so um he can trap people at the audience chamber or at Jabba's palace um, Ferocity 4 isn't bad. He's going to probably be able to... F He's going to eat anything that basically can't draw a battle destiny. So if he goes up against somebody that has less than 4 power and they can't draw a battle destiny, you're just going to win and he's going to eat them. That's simple as that. And there's a lot of characters in Scavenger that are power less than 4 and are not going to be able to draw a battle destiny on their own. And if the, the, he gets attacked, they have to have more than nine power to kill him because you would add his ferocity and his bark, which is his basically his power and defense value together. And if they exceed it, then they'll beat Bubo. But if they don't exceed it, Bubo lives and then can attack them back. So Bubo is actually pretty good. Um, in older formats i actually really like bubo i'm gonna put him into this deck we may end up cutting him the only other creature that you would really put any consideration into is womp rat he is a destiny five which is nice ferocity equals a destiny so his ferocity could be kind of all over the place really you would try to set up sort of track some like five so that when he goes to attack um you know he'll have a pretty high ferocity and have a good chance at winning. Habitat is exterior planet sites, which does include Hoth. Ferocity is plus one for each other. Womp Rat at same site. That's, I mean, I guess it could. He's selective because he's got this little green symbol, which means that they're not going to necessarily attack each other. Lost if bullseyed by Luke's T16 Skyhopper present. That's not going to be a thing, even in regular constructed like nobody plays luke's t16 skyhopper and luke's t16 skyhopper is not in this format because it's a premium card um deploy two is pretty good as well so um you know he can have a lot of power um and he can have a pretty good chance at killing something but he also will attack your characters whereas bubo won't so um, i'll leave bubo in here for now Otherwise, we have devices, and none of these devices are any good. Um, probably the best one is Droid Detector, and you would play that at probably the audience chamber. 
so that they can't move R2 with or a droid with a copy of the gift onto it um, to reduce your force strains. And you would really only play that if you're playing some type of like deck that's going to start tattooing Jabba's palace and pull the audience chamber and need to like control the audience chamber. Otherwise, it's never going to come up, and none of these other cards are even remotely playable. There could, I guess, be a tractor beam deck. Tractor beaming is uh, pretty nice, actually, if you're able to successfully do it. Um, you would really want to have Captain Lennox so you can do tractor beaming during your control phase rather than battle phase. And then there is a couple of red cards that can add to your tractor beam total. Um, you know, anecdotally, I had in not in Scavenger, but in a retro league game, um, somebody tractor beamed my Tantiv four that had Luke and Han that I was set up to do don't get cocky on in their control phase, and then beat the hell out of my like lone other Corellian Corvette that no longer could draw Battle Destiny. Um, I lost that game pretty hard, but um, so tractor beaming can be kind of cool. Um, not for this deck, but it's an option. Okay. Um, there's no epic events. There's no game aid. There's no Jedi tests. We've already gone through locations. There's no objective. There's no pod racer. We went through starships, vehicles, and weapons. So we just have red cards left. Already earlier in the part one of the deck build, we kind of already pulled out a bunch of the effects that we were going to play. So I'm just really, I'm not going to go back through all of them. Just watch part one and I go over all the effects. Um, but I'm just going to kind of pull them back out as to what I'm going to probably put into this deck. So this is going to be Battle Order, Blast the Door Kids, Combat Response, Come Here You Big Coward, um, First Strike. Uh, I already have Imperial Rest Order. I'm going to play Imperial Decree. Um, I already have Mobilization Points. We'll play Oppressive Enforcement, a Pride of the Empire, Search and Destroy. Start with three, Hell to Pay. Um, I may cut some of those down, and uh, you cannot hide forever. I've gone through you know, what all those cards do. Unfortunately, we're already at 51 cards, so we are going to end up cutting some cards out of this deck. Um, that's usually how I build decks. I'll put in like everything that I want and then start cutting stuff out. So moving along to interrupts. Okay. Um, a Dangerous Time. This is a good manipulation card. So you would use this to use. So examine the cards in opponent's force pile, reorder however you wish. So if you have Myomaneath on the table, you can reorder your opponent's force pile, put all their unique male rebels and aliens on the bottom of their force pile. So when they're using their force, they're using their red cards or whatever else is on top. When they go to draw, they draw all of their males, and then it goes to your turn before you force drain. During your control phase, you spend, you know, 10 force, look at their hand, and kill all the males that they drew because you were able to reorder their force pile. Consequently, if you don't have Myomaneath, you can put all of their characters at the top of their force pile. So if they spend force, they're going to draw a bunch of, like, junk red cards or locations or things that don't do anything that are not characters um, because they used them all. So kind of a neat manipulation card. I don't think I will put it in this deck, but if you're building a manipulator deck with like scanning crews and defensive fires, um, a dangerous time is a reasonable inclusion. Dark time for the rebellion. This is one of the few cards that can actually pull locations back out of a deck. So if opponent just deployed a planet site, search a reserve deck for a related system and immediately deploy it. Um, so if they put out, you know, if they use Insurrection to pull out Tatooine Docking Bay, you can play Dark Time for the Rebellion, go get Tatooine and put it into play. Really, this would be something that you would probably play more heavy space 
the only thing is like if they're on Tatooine, okay, great, you can go get Tatooine system. But it's not like they're also then gonna play a Cloud City site and an Endor site and a random other site, and like you're able to pull all your systems out. Um, and then like some systems like Kashik or Kessel or Kifix that are just your best systems, they don't have any ground sites related to them. So I mean, if you have some very specific need to like have, say, Tatooine, Hoth, Bespin, or Endor, um, then I guess you could play a Dark Time for the Rebellion. But, you know, I just wanted to point it out as it's one of the few cards that can pull a location out of your deck. Abyss and Ornament, this card's great. If you have non-unique aliens, we don't have non-unique aliens, so we're not doing anything with this, but it'll let you take a non-unique alien into hand or retreat force if you draw destiny less than the number of um, non-unique aliens of one type on table. So it's a search card, it's a tutor and a retrieval card. Um, so it's really good. And it's a use destiny five. Accelerate is basically dark maneuvers, but for speeder bikes or swoops, so if you're building a speeder bike deck, you know, you can maybe play like one copy of Accelerate. Um, all power to weapons. Battle was just initiated. Each of your ties present is power plus two and immune to attrition. So if you're playing a dedicated tie deck, whether that's tie interceptors or regular tie fighters, um, great card. Oh, excuse me getting late here again um it also works if you're doing like matching starships with pilots like side one side three with meanda and hellsby or if you're doing like saber two saber three saber four um this will work with that as well or you can lose one force to take up to three non-unique ties into hand so it's basically just the mirror of organized attack um, it's not going to be for this deck but it is an option so we have alter um, cancel one effect or a teeny effect by drawing destiny less than the ability of your highest ability character. Or cancel one sense card played. So we have all of the highest ability characters that we possibly can. We have Prophetess. We have Lieutenant Commander Arden, who's ability three. We have Colonel David John. And actually, he's only ability two. We have a Commander Brandy, and we have Neato Dugat. So we have the four characters that have greater than two ability. Now, looking at my deck... You know, I have a few cards, Tech Moore, these cannons, the Scythe, Squadrons are four, Bubo's a four, you know, but, you know, my Minith's a three, a couple other guys are threes, but for the most part, all of my blue and black cards are less than three for Destiny. All my red cards are not, which makes playing Alter a little bit hard and really other than projection of a skywalker or bargaining table probably everything that my opponent's going to play is going to be immune to alter anyway so i don't really know if you would want to play alter um, I'll probably put in a couple copies of Sense. The only consideration that you would play Alter would be to cancel your opponent's copies of Sense. But that would also assume that your opponent's going to be playing the characters that they that work with Sense and Alter from their side. Like if they're playing the Chatter Fawn deck, like all their characters are ability like one or two. Like nothing's going to be able to use sensor alter on that or if they're playing like x-wing swarm maybe they have a bow shack who's gonna like i don't even know i don't think they would play bow shack in an x-wing swarm deck so like excuse me so like some of the better light side decks won't even have the ability to play sensor alter and if you're really only playing alter to cancel sense well one i would probably just play control even though alter has a much better destiny number than control um but control can cancel sense or alter it can also cancel a mobile effect so sand whirl and ice storm 
which could be real things, can cancel an immediate effect, which would be like, I guess really just legendary Starfighter, because um, everything else is immune to control. And um, it can cancel a force strain, which is, you know, more important. So, sorry, um, for this deck, I don't think I'm going to play Alter. Bantha Fodder, if you're going to play some type of Tusken Raider deck, gets Banthas, Tusken Raiders, or Weakways, you know, Tam Darn Garen is a rare, but, you know, if you're going a Tusken Raider deck, Bantha Fodder is fine. Blast points. Again, this is going to be in that like Imperial Academy training, an entire legion of my best troops. If your trooper just fired a character weapon during a battle, add a battle destiny. Or during your deploy phase, deploy on your trooper one character weapon from reserve deck. So you would definitely play blast points in that because that'll go, like you're going to forfeit your blaster to inconsequential losses to cover three forfeit. Then the next turn, you can put a used five back in your deck playing blast points here to go get that blaster back out and then deploy it onto your trooper who can then use it in battle, shoot something, and then forfeit the blaster and you just kind of rinse and repeat. This deck doesn't have any blasters, nor do we have any troopers, so not a card that we're going to put in here. Blasted Droid also kind of works with this Blast Points deck, Imperial Academy deck. During your control phase, fire for free. One of your blasters carried by a trooper or one of your automated weapons, any hit targets are immediately lost. So this is just a used version of Sniper, so long as it's a blaster being fired by a trooper. So in that deck, you're going to have all different troopers with blasters so you guys basically get a free sniper out of it close call is garbage cloud city sabak this is a deck that i want to make at some point and i really feel like it could work well but um it's not for this deck uh cold feet this card's garbage Collateral damage, your opponent's probably not going to have any um, weapons either. Like, they're going to be this deck or an X-Wing deck or something, so they're not going to have that. We're not going to play Combat Readiness because that's not going to be our starting interrupt. Um, compact Firepower is for the Biker Scout deck. If your Warrior just fired a DH-17, which is the Scout Blaster, um, during battle... You draw destiny if it's a zero, no effect. Well, we're not in that deck. You wouldn't have any zeros left by the time you're battling. So one to three, target may not use weapons this turn, which is not really what you want to use because they probably just don't have weapons. You want to draw a four plus. So you'd have to kind of time this to like track it. Target's power forfeit zero this battle, but they're not hit. So um, control cancel sensor alter. Cancel an immediate effect, mobile effect, or four string. It's Destiny 2. It's not great. I'll probably put one in just as like an insurance card for if they do have sensor alter. And if I realize that they don't have sensor alter, randomly I can just use it to cancel a drain of two somewhere for a turn by only losing one force to control. Coordinated attack, really the only card that you would be using this for is um, lost during a battle art system or sector. Use three force to cancel a battle that's just drawn. The use portion of it's not terrible during a battle at a system or sector. Instead of firing one of your starship weapons at a target, reduce that's target power by four until end of turn. I mean, I'd rather just hit their target than reduce it by four, but I guess if you're like really outpowered you might reduce it by four just so you don't have to like lose a bunch. Um, Cause like if you have side one with Meanda and the cannon, you kind of want to survive till your move phase. So you can fire during the move phase rather than like fire the cannon during battle to hit 
but like the four power might be the difference between you like sacking major meander or scythe one altogether and keeping it on table so that you can fire again in your move phase so that your opponent's then power will have moved down enough that you wouldn't necessarily have to sacrifice your tie again the next battle um it's very corner case again you're really going to be using this mostly for the lost function which I don't think that's really worth a whole card in this deck to play. Counter Assault is a good card, and it may be even worth, maybe even correct to just play one regardless, because there could just be times where your opponent stacks like four characters, and they have like a total power of like seven, and you're like, okay counter assault i'm gonna draw four destiny and even off your four destiny if you drew three four threes and you were 12 you make them lose five force and if you have any ability to track and you're able to like track a five and a five and a three and a three suddenly you're 16 to their seven they're gonna lose like nine force so i kind of like counter assault even though most of our characters have really low destinies, and then I just put a control in, which has a low destiny. Um, I'm going to put Counter Assault, one copy, one copy of Counter Assault in the deck. It might be just one of the first cards we cut. Crash Landing does something with unpiloted snow speeders, not something we're going to play. Dark Maneuvers is great. We're going to Dark Maneuvers our Scythe. Because we only have a few ties, we only really need one of this card. Um, and it's trackable six. So we'll put one Dark Maneuvers in. Dark Strike, we don't have a lightsaber. Nobody's playing Swing and a Miss. Um, lose one force to cause an opponent's character just hit to be immediately lost. We don't have any weapons for that. Dead Ewok, Dead Jawar, no. Defensive fire, cancel rotor asteroid, not what you're playing this for, or randomly select a card from opponent's hand and place it unseen in used pile. So it's just a way to take cards out of your opponent's hand, um, kind of manipulation style. It's a good card. I'm not going to put it in this deck, but um, there's a manipulator deck that definitely wants defensive fire. Direct hit is blah. I don't even know what this card's called. Don't move. The battle was just initiated. Two of your troopers present are armed with weapons. Target opponent's character present. Draw destiny. Zero to two, no effect. Three to four, target's power is zero for remainder of turn. Five plus, target is captured. Wouldn't you just use, like, this card instead? And just use scout blasters? Like, this card's just a lot better than don't move. Yeah, the card's terrible. Double back, we don't really have bounty hunters. I mean, Dan's born's a thing, but he's not worth playing double back for. This Dune Sea Sabak is terrible. E Chihuahua is a no. Alice Hellrot is like a very good card. This card's super broken, but we have Imperial Rest Order. Like our, we built the whole deck around Imperial Rest Order. We really can't play Alice. Emergency deployment is not something that we're going to be able to really play either, but it's a good card. If opponent just initiated a battle where opponent has more than double your power, reveal three cards from the top of your deck. And then have those three deploy for free anywhere, any characters, starships, or vehicles, weapons, or devices. All the other cards are lost. So if you... It takes some planning to put the card together. You can't just blind emergency deployment because you're going to flip over like either like a tie cannon that you can't put on a tie and it's going to be lost or you flip over like some red cards and they're just lost. Um, so it kind of takes a little bit of effort to put in um, to planning if you really wanted to play emergency deployment, I would recommend playing reactor terminal so you can like stack your deck, put like blizzard walker and like a, two pilots together or like victory class star destroyer and like two pilots together. And then 
kind of like strategically sit like something somewhere like you know like let prophetess sit at a site by herself and then your opponent plays some stuff that are gonna have more than double your total power they battle and you can like ha emergency deployment flip over blizzard walker and two pilots which go on as pilots and now i'm like power a bunch versus you it is very cutesy and is kind of hard to make work um when it works though like one time it's gonna work it's gonna be a huge blowout but it doesn't work all the time evader we don't have vader and there's no um revolution it's not worth playing an Imperial just lost from a Death Star location. We don't have any Death Star location, so not playing Vader. Exposure, Exhaustion, Fear, none of those cards are really worth talking about. Flawless Marksmanship, add X to one Starship weapon or tractor beam Destiny before Destiny is drawn when targeting opponent's Starship. You can use it as a use to add two or lost to add four. Which, I mean, it's good with the cannons, right? You're going to put not Hellsby. You're going to put Major Meanda, who adds two to his weapon destiny draw. You can now add four to your weapon destiny draw. That's probably going to kill like 90% of all the light side ships. Um, I'm not going to put flawless marksmanship because we're already at 54 cards and there's a ton of interrupts that we need to put into this deck. So flawless marksmanship would just end up getting cut anyway. Uh, freeze as uh, some junk with a scout armed with a blaster. Not worried about it. Full scale alert, same thing. We will play a copy of Gick um, just because, you know, you could get into a situation where your opponent just plays like six Elams against you and they're going to be power 24 and you're a power two or four and maybe you draw Destiny and draw like a two and. They draw a four and they're 30 to your six. And even after forfeiting everything, you have to forfeit like another 12 cards. Just gick it away. Um, should be the motto of Star Wars. Just gick it away. Um, we're not playing Dune Sea, Jungle Waste, Beggars Canyon, or Large Moisture Farm, Jowl Camp, or Moss Eisley. So I'm not going to talk about Gravel Storm. He hasn't come back. Is very good. It's like the only card that's a destiny plus three greater than ability it's very easy to make something go missing but they have to be alone at your exterior planet site except a docking bay which for us is only going to be the fifth marker so fortunately we can't play he has come back yet heavy fire zone if the battle was just initiated deploy for free a vehicle or starship weapon from hand or reserve deck on your participating vehicle or starship so it's a way to get the cannons out onto scythe one i'm going to put a copy in we're probably going to cut it hidden weapons nothing has mandalorian armor there's no boba fett there's no character with mandalorian armor like Jodo cast or Django fett if you're playing virtual cards and the card mandalorian armor is a rare so we can skip that. High speed tactics. This is a card that would get played in the speeder bike deck, not in this deck. You can add destiny if you have, add a battle destiny if you have pilot speeder bike with a biker scout. Hollow net transmission is really good against transmission terminated because that's canceling visage of the emperor. That's not going to be a thing. You could use the take one imperial into hand, but you have would be using it as a lost function and it's still a destiny too so not great any of these like end or red cards i don't even really want to look at um hut smooch lets you steal an opponent's undercover spy there's not really undercover spies i mean there's light side definitely has spies right they have commander van der willard they've got wire and serper they've got Jerome Webb, they've got regular Bothan Spy, they've got Mama Nadon, there's maybe a couple other ones, one more or so. So they do have spies at common and uncommon, and they have the card undercover, so they could have some undercover stuff, so it might be kind of cool to snatch one, but like at the point that they're playing that many spies and undercovers, they probably have more than one or two copies of undercover in their deck 
which point hot smooch isn't really doing you anything like you stealing commander vanden willard is much different than you stealing boosh or tk421 in like regular constructed i can't shake him starship weapon aboard your starfighter was just fired add one battle destiny during your deploy phase deploy one starship weapon or tractor beam from reserve deck uh, this battle was just initiated. This one is during your deploy phase. I actually like this one better because we can add a battle destiny. So I'll put a copy of I Can't Shake Him in there. Like, I don't need to get the, like, surprise, gotcha, heavy fire zone, put my cannon on, shoot your thing. Like, I can just go play my tie. Also play I Can't Shake Him. Get the cannon. Not battle. Move phase. Shoot your thing. You deploy some stuff, Talon roll one of your ships, shoot your other ship, forfeit something else other than my tie, my turn, don't battle, go right into um, move phase, shoot your ship, draw back into your dark maneuvers, Talon roll combo, Talon roll something else, and you've cleared out like four or five of their ships because you were like, not trying to be cute and make them initiate the battle so you could go get your weapon for free. Just go get your weapon for free. I just as soon kiss a Wookiee. This is a very good card. It's just you have to reframe everything that you're playing this within Scavenger. So it's not like you're actually going to like put back something that's impressive. Like you're going to put back like racing, not racing, like a patrol craft or something and it's like okay that wasn't really worth three cards three force and a card um it's good in constructed not in scavenger i've got a problem here destiny Use one force to target an opponent's starfighter with maneuver at system or sector where battle just finished. Draw destiny starfighter lost if destiny is greater than maneuver. I don't have great destiny with this deck, so we're not going to play that. Imbalance, if they just retrieve force, they lose half X round up. There's not a ton of light side retrieval, so we can pretty much discount imbalance. Imperial decree is good. I'm going to put two in just because we do want to be able to, like play things piecemeal and what i mean by that is like sometimes you're only going to be activating like nine to eleven force but like you could play something for six this turn because next turn you can play something for six but like if you just didn't if you just like activate it and didn't do anything and just passed the turn your opponent can do something different than if you just like played your victory class star destroyer or played your prophetess to their site they overcommit or commit things to go battle you you can barrier one so that they can't necessarily draw destiny or the ship that they put the cannons on was the thing that got barriered or they can't move it so they have to move other things there to defend it which frees up other systems or sites that you could move to or go to to attack your opponent um so yeah we're going to play imperial bag imperial code cylinders does nothing imperial reinforcements does nothing imperial supply is an okay card it gives you a one shot one time one shot boost of force activation not really what i'm looking to do in this deck but it's not the worst thing some terrible end or rare uh, in range, if you have a Star Destroyer in a battle during the weapon segment, you can use its tractor beam for free. Add two to tractor beam destiny of targeting a unique starship. If not, capture target as power maneuver minus three for the remainder of turn. So like I said, there is probably some tractor beam deck that's got like, not Commander Nemet, Captain Lennox, so you can fire the tractor beam in your control phase, in range, and... Um, our first catch of the day, which whenever we eventually get there, adds two to your tractor beam destiny draw. So if you're adding two here and you're adding two from our first catch of the day, and you're adding maybe two more from, say, flawless marksmanship, you should be able to just tractor beam any light side ship, roughly. 
it's worse as a Destiny 6 Lost Interrupt. Mostly, a bunch of lights and decks will play. It could be worse. And the natural foil to it's worse, which is um, it's a hit, isn't in the format because that's a premium card. So I'm going to put one copy of it's worse in um, because this can randomly just be a blowout card. You force drain them for one. They spend one force to play. It could be worse. You just activate it. You activate it like 10. You It could be wor it's worse them for like seven they lose the, if they don't have anything to counter that, they lose the, it could be worse. They still spent the force, but it's not canceling the force drain anymore. And then they have to lose seven more instead of like one. So it can just be a huge blowout card. Destiny six doesn't hurt either. Job is palace, Sabak. We're not going to be playing. Job is through with you. If your bounty hunter just fired a ca character weapon, add a battle destiny. Our only character is Dan's Born. He's not even a warrior. Or Bounty Hunter's Dan's Born. He's not even a warrior. Skip. Jabba's Twerps. Alien Leader. There are no alien leaders in Scavenger. Kintan Strider can regenerate the top character of your lost pile back into your hand, which is like a neat way to like loop like Officer Evax or DS-61-2. It's a little bit circumstantial. I'm not crazy about it. Uh, levitation attack does nothing. Lightsaber deficiency doesn't do anything. Limited resources is very good. This card just can close out a game. They get low. You know, they've got 10 force left, and you're force draining them, and they have to, like, sit there and be like, do I pitch this one card out of my hand? They pitch the one card, and then you're like, ha gotcha. Limited resources. Lose four more. And then you can just kind of carry the, take the game away. Main course is good. Use capture, cancel frozen assets. Frozen assets isn't programmed into gem, so it doesn't matter. Using it for lost opponents. Alien and Rebel are decided in battle together without a protocol droid, which I think there's only R3. No, he's rare. I don't think there's any protocol droids. Draw one Destiny, two of Rebel is Han. It's not going to be Han. And subtract that amount from opponents, attrition, and total power. I don't think a loss, like you're never going to use the used function, so... This card is not necessarily worth a card. If you could draw two Destiny, then we're talking, but drawing just one Destiny is probably not good enough. Masterful Move is excellent. It's going to go get us a Gick and this Monarch. We're going to play one copy of Monarch. We might, we, we might sh actually play two copies of Monarch just because there are a lot of decks that revolve around non-unique cards. Chatter fans, Elams, X-Wings, Speeders, etc. where like you can monoc them and they're maybe lose two or four cards. Maybe they don't even lose any. But now you've spent your monoc and like having a second monoc gives you an insurance policy when they decide, like, oh, there's no way he could possibly be paying two Monarchs when you really are, so they end up drawing up to, like, 16 or 17, and then you can, like, Monarch use them back down to eight, and then it's like, oh, he actually had the other Monarch. That's, ooh, and, like, their whole plan gets shot. Nagak, um, I'm going to just put in one for now. Nagak... Uh, punches to put four or more characters to the same location this turn, prevent all of those characters from battling this turn. There has to be characters to locations. If it was, if they deployed four cards with ability to locations, then I could see playing the Gok just because it could work in space or on ground. It's not unreasonable to think that your opponent can't just drop four characters. Like they could just put four Chatter fans in front of you. Then you can just do like a Nagak, which is like a mass barrier on all of them. It's very corner case and very narrow. It's not going to be for this deck, but, you know, something to think about. None shall pass. If you to play a rebel to a Java's Palace site, you have no Imperials at Java's Palace sites, return rebel to hand. Any force used remains used. There's not really that many good rebels that you're going to play. That's really the end of the story. And that's why the no bargain, none shall pass deck, like, should in theory be good, but actually really isn't. Oh, switch off. Destiny 6 used interrupt. Cancel an attempt to target your droid to be stolen, hit, or lost. Um, 
you don't have Gurry, you don't have four line with concussion rifle, you don't have IG-88 with riot gun. We only have one droid, which is the wed septoid droid, which is going to be inside of one of our ships or blizzard walkers. Like, it's good in constructed, like Premier Three Reflections too, but not here in Scavenger. Omnibox is anti-shuffling or anti-tracking card, which you know, let's play one copy of. Uta Guta Solo does something against neighboring leads. You can't, you know, cancel Kessel runs, like whatever. Preventer just deployed Smuggler from moving this turn. Unfortunately, there's not really a ton of Smugglers, and Kessel runs a lost, or is a rare, so you're not going to play that. And Imperial Rest Order is already shutting down neighboring leads. You don't need Uta Guta Solo for this. Operational is planned. This is a starting card, but you can't play Jerdrod or Death Star 2 in this format, so you're really just using it used place one card from hand on top of force pile so it can get you out of a jam like if they start deploying a bunch of stuff to a site and you're like oh i should have held one force back for this imperial barrier you could put a force back and then barrier them um it's also just a good way to cycle some cards so like let's say you draw battle order and they already have battle plan out Playing your copy of Battle Order, I mean, you can do it, but it's really only giving you the ability to battle for free, which is not nothing. But a lot of times you don't really need to play the Battle Order. So it's just going to end up sitting in your hand, and you're probably just going to lose it to a Force Strain. At least with something like Operation was planned, you could just put it back into your Force Pile to count it as a 5 Destiny rather than just a card that you want to throw away. Um, I like operational as planned. I'll put one in our first sketch of the day. This is the other tractor beam card adds two to a tractor beam destiny draw or cancels first transport as way, which is rare or hyper escape. So, um, if you're doing some type of tractor beam deck, you're going to play our first sketch of the day. Some terrible speeder bike card overload. Um, overload's a decent card is if you can track because you could just track a zero but there's not really a lot of weapons like there's no epps with built-in weapons there's no lightsabers there's none of that stuff and we're gonna pull all of our sites out by you know at minimum turn four just because we have four docking bays but really by about turn two there's not really going to be that many zeros left in our deck um, so we're not really going to play that overwhelmed this is a blowout card if you get it to work right, which is during a deploy phase target a system where your total power is more than double opponent's total power and opponent has no Jedi, which there's no Jedi in this format, or starship weapons. They could have X-Wing laser cannon, but they're not going to have any other starship weapons. Place all of opponent's starships and cards on them in opponent's use pile. So if you can set this up correctly, Sorry, getting late. Um, you can overwhelm them, and it's just a blowout. I'm not going to play it in this deck because we have a pretty meager space package overall. Pitiful Little Band does something with Speeder Bike Troopers at the bunker. Prepare the Chamber does something with Carbon Chamber Testing. We do need to put in a Prepared Defenses because we are starting that with our IO and mob points, and probably you cannot hide forever. Projective telepathy cancels anger, fear, aggression. If opponent just initiated battle, our force strain opponent used, used to force. Uh, let's put one copy of projective telepathy in there. Anger, fear, aggression is a credible threat that light side can play. And then the used to force is just another way of force choking them. Like we're only going to give away two force icons total. And one of them is only going to get pulled once they've pulled their echo docking bay, which already gave them one icon, it's just giving you an icon. So in effect, we're only really giving away one icon with this deck total. Um, and then we're playing like, you know, some manipulation card. Like we do have battle order so that we can try and control Rendilly to force them to spend more to force strain if you projective telepathy on top of that they're like did i really need to spend five forces to drain for one not really but i'm already pot committed so i'm three force in i might as well just spend the other two force and then you just like 
I don't know, lose like a victory class star destroyer that you're just going to recur the next turn. And it's like, well, that wasn't really worth it. And then you've eight, eaten up five of their force. Same thing if they like deploy down to like the wire and they have like exactly one force left and they're like initiated battle and you're like projective telepathy and they can't pay and you're like got out of that one like i escaped this battle that they overcommitted to and now i can just walk away so i like projectors lefty. we already went over put all sections on alert relentless pursuit is just the same thing as power pivot um reduce their if you have a starship with a weapon reduce an opponent's star um fighter or starship's power to zero or plays an opponent starship just hit and lost pile like i don't hate it because we are trying to do this size one thing not crazy about it either right of passage is junk sacrifices okay there's not really any weapons that are going to be reducing your character's forfeit to zero that you would need to then place sacrifice to make their forfeit not zero um scanning crew we are going to be starting you cannot hide forever which are, sorry, your opponent most likely will start your insight has served you well, which cancels scanning crew altogether. If they don't, one scanning crew could be good, but there's not really any rebels. Like I keep emphasizing this, so we're actually going to cut scanning crew altogether. Scout Recon does nothing. Self-destruct mechanism does nothing. So let's put in two copies of Sense. Um, it's not that unlikely that they will have will not have wise advice. Some people may even also have do or do not, in which case we're going to get kind of screwed on the Sense. But sometimes there's just a card that you just need to Sense and... It will turn the game or save the game for you. And so it's worth it if even if they have do or do not out to like lose the sense and to force to prevent your opponent from playing whatever that card is. It really sucks if they recycle the card off wise advice because then you're just like, Ugh. but and they're just going to draw it in a turn or two anyway. So I'm going to start with adding two. Set for stun is pretty good. Use two force to target an opponent's character. Draw destiny if destiny is greater than a character's ability. Character goes back to their hand. So you can set up blowouts with this where like most of their characters are going to have two ability. One or two ability. So like it's not hard to get a three on top of your deck. So that in the middle of a battle when they're counting on their other two two to like make four ability. That... So, me, so that they can draw battle destiny before they get to the battle destiny you like set for stun their guy back to their hand now they can't draw battle destiny and clear the site um it's okay i'm probably not going to play it in this deck shattered hope does nothing shocking revelation does nothing really shot him up or shut him down is really only to cancel back to tank which back to tanks rare and it's not in this format sneak attack is some biker scout thing Sniper is good, but we don't have any character weapons. Something hit us cumulatively adds to attrition once because it's like a lost interrupt. Not playing something hit us. Sonic Bombardment does something with captured uh, prisoners at prisons or something. Stop motion is terrible, like creature vehicle thing. Stunning Leader is okay. The thing is, like, you usually want to use this offensively where you're like, oh, you have Boshek and you have a Bomar Monk and you have a Baragwin. Deploy Lieutenant, Lieutenant Cabell, Officer Evax, and Commander Nemet. Initiate a battle. Stunning leader. You remove the Bo Bo uh, Boshek from the battle. Now those five guys just beat up on... Baragwin or something that's there. Stunning Leader and Counterpart Blasted Orchids are probably better in Scavenger than they are in Construct It, just because everybody's so bad. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. Something Hit Us does something with Asteroids. Decale 
we're not really looking to reverse destiny draws um, because you know once we started adding red cards our our overall average destiny went up pretty nicely talon roll i do want to put two copies of talon roll in because you can only it's been eroded so you can only use it Target two starfighters, your TIE LN, which Scythe 1 or Scythe 3 is, and a Rebel starfighter present at same system or sector. Okay. Each player draws a destiny. Okay. Opponent's total destiny and starship's power, which a few maneuvers doesn't work on it. So, like, their power might be, like, 5. So their destiny plus 5. If your, you total your tie, your total destiny plus your tie's power plus your tie's maneuver, and then the lowest loses. So, like, Scythe 1 with Major Meanda on it, he adds 3 to power. So, it's going to be power 4, maneuver 4, which means that you're going to be 8 plus a destiny, and they might be power 5 plus a destiny so you're already plus three on them if you a few maneuvers or sorry dark maneuvers you add two to maneuver and one to power so you're adding now three so you're like 11 plus a destiny to their five like they're just never going to get there and you can just and then the loser is lost so it's just like talon roll your ship talon roll your ship activate talon roll your ship draw you know talent roller ship talent roller ship and you can just kind of loop talent rolls um it's just a good way to get rid of light tight space tauntaun skull is pretty garbage place a character or creature or creature vehicle from your lost pal out of play to add its destiny number to your total no thank you empire's back none of the characters that empire's back can get are viable in this format they're coming in too fast. If you have a piloted starship armed with a starship weapon, select one of opponent's starships presence to lose all immunity to attrition for the remainder of turn or cancel a few maneuvers. Not awful. I'd rather just talon roll their guy and then shoot it than like be like, you don't have immunity, so now you have to lose that specific ship. Like they probably have more than one ship, which is why shooting and talon roll are just better. They still shut down the main reactor. If you have a piloted capital starship armed with a starship weapon or equipped with a tractor beam, use two force to target opponent starship present until end of turn. Starship cannot move or its pilots cannot apply ability towards drawing battle destiny. So it's basically the equivalent of you are beaten but in space and they have to have a capital ship weapon, which I think is only the premier turbo laser, which that weapon is god awful. So don't even bother with it. But this card itself is very powerful. Um, this is some rescue cancels out of commission. Basically, I guess it cancels alternatives to fighting. So you can just keep battling in space. But like I said, our space package is pretty meager and we'd rather just tell and roll until they run out of stuff that you really wouldn't be playing alternatives to fighting. These rebels won't escape us is a good card. Cancels neighbor leads. Well, we have Imperial Rest Order for that. During your move phase, cancel Landing Claw, which that card's a pain in the butt. Cancel Hyper Escape Closer, one React. We have Nemet and Arnett to work against um, Reacts on the ground. And I think for some reason, I feel like there was one guy that worked in space that canceled Reacts. Maybe that was one of the DS-181 pilots that we didn't end up putting in here. Um, so they cancel reacts in space or technically on the ground. And then, again, we don't really have, like, a huge space force. Sorry, getting pretty late here. Torture. Cancel never tell me the odds. Destiny 6 used to interrupt. Very good but not better than you cannot hide forever, which is going to straight up cancel. Never tell me the odds. So we don't really need to revisit torture trap door. Not a thing. Trinto Duaba kind of like voyeur. If there are any cards in opponents use pile during a battle phase, draw one destiny, all cards there with the same destiny number are lost. So, you know, if you can track your opponent's deck, and you can track your deck, you can probably get pretty good value out of Trinto Duaba. 
but if you're really not tracking and you're just kind of blind playing Trinto Dualba, that's not really a great card. I mean, it's a used five, Destiny five card. That's not awful, but uh, I'm just, I'm not sold on Trinto Dualba. Trooper Assault, we're not playing Troopers, but this card's phenomenal. Trooper Charge, much worse than Trooper Assault. Trooper Sabak, again, this is one that's going to be in that like Casino, Barkwind Dan, R2, Q2 type deck. A Gambler, a Sight, Wild Cards or whatever, Locations and Droids. Transport Vehicle without Armor, one character weapon. Like your stakes you're never really going to get. It's just you're trying to do perfect Sabak and make them lose two cards every time you play it. Tuscan Scavengers is whatever. We do have a bunch of cards for Twilight Advisor, like we're starting this and this, and let's just say you cannot hide forever. That leaves us with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, minus 1, so 12. That leaves us with 12 effects that we would want to play, and primarily we want to get oppressive enforcement out as soon as possible to start grabbing things. And then once we know that they're not on numbers, you cannot hide forever can get battle order, combat response, um, search and destroy. So it can get a couple of other kind of key effects um, by cycling itself. So all of that to say is it's probably still worthwhile to play one Twi'lek advisor um, to go search out, you know, your blast door controls because they've been saving one force every single turn you know they have a rebel barrier just blow them out with blast door controls uncertain is the future lets you basically like wheel of fortune right use three force each player places hand into reserve deck then shuffles use pile on reserve deck and then deal out the same number of cards that they shuffled back in there's some mechanics that again obviously fixes this card is a little bit harder to do in real life but this isn't really that kind of a deck that you would play uncertain as the future in. Uh, that would maybe be more of a deck that's either trying to abuse my um, where like, let's say you just have a bunch of force activated. You can like my them or you can like uncertain, like if you like, and then like they show their hand and they didn't have any male rebels or aliens. Well, like the next turn, they might have drawn only a couple of cards. It's not really worthwhile to mine them and eat them again because you're only going to get get like, you know, two new cards. So you might just uncertain as the future, re-deal out the hands and then mine them and eat them and kind of try to like catch a wider net. Um, not for this deck, but it's a pretty powerful effect. Voyeur. Name an interrupt card. Opponent must reveal all used pile. You choose used. Opponent must lose one force for each copy of that interrupt. Found there, lost. Each copy of that interrupt is lost. So you're probably going to name Narshada Wind Chimes like 90% of the time. We'll put one in there because it's a good way to just like continuously cycle like one or two damage that your opponent can't really interact with other than playing the game. Like they're going to have a used pile. So you voyeur them, look at their used pile, and maybe you know from experience, like playing them, that they always have like this one interrupt or something. You can just uh, kind of get rid of it or make them continuously lose a force. Walker Barrage is not a thing. Wall Fire is not a thing. Watch your back during a battle at a system or sector if you're about to draw a battle. Card for Destiny, you can use the maneuver number of your Starfighter present, which is going to be four. I'd rather just draw a regular Destiny than waste a card, a lost interrupt to draw four. Like, if it was going to be a seven or an eight or a nine, then yeah, sure. Or because it's a substitution, if I was consistently going to be getting two Battle Destiny, and my opponent had a way to limit my battle destiny, then I could substitute, I could draw one and substitute another and still provide a bunch of attrition. Um, that's not really likely to happen within Scavenger. We have a prisoner, not a card. I'm going to waste my time talking about it. You can capture people on like Besiege Battle or something like that. Weapon Levitation is fine. Um, 
you can search your use bound, take one weapon into hand, so you can go get your cannon, but I can shake him, can go get your cannon as well. And we don't, we only have one character of ability greater than three, which is Prophetess, and she's not a warrior, so she couldn't even really hold the weapon or use it. Um, so no to weapon levitation. Uh, no to pat weapon of an ungrateful son. If a lightsaber is just used to enhance force strain, put it in its owner's use pile. Doesn't matter. Place any of all your devices or character weapons on table and use pile. We don't have any devices or character weapons. So kind of a dead card. Wounded Wookiee is good with non-unique aliens. During a battle, if opponent just drew more than two battle destiny, cancel all but two of those destinies. It's unlikely they're going to draw three battle destiny or more, like, ever. So that kind of is a relevant game text. Or if your non-unique alien is present in a battle, cancel game text with one rebel present or cancel clash of saviors. I'm not going to play playing clash. The alien, you know, non-unique alien canceling a rebel is fine. But again, there's just not really that many good rebels. So we're not going to play wounded. Okay. You are beaten is very good, but we don't have a lightsaber in this deck, so we can't really play it. And then this is the tripler card, which we're not going to be a trying to triple battle damage anytime soon with this deck. And I believe that is everything. And we are at 72 cards. So we need to cut 12 cards out of this deck. What 12 cards would we like to cut? Um, so when I get to cutting, generally I try to cut low destiny cards first and keep as many high destinies in there now or if there's just something that kind of stands out like yeah i don't really need that like i don't really need two blizzard walkers we're probably going to be battling mostly at one site and i can just move that blizzard walker back and forth and chase them playing tag rather than just play a second blizzard walker so i'll probably cut one of those i'll probably also cut bubo he can't really go to any of our locations and if they're playing space he's just kind of a dead card um, so i'll cut bubo out of this deck since we can go get our starship cannons with i can't shake him and i can't shake him does something else like adding a destiny by firing i don't really need two because this one kind, I can't shake them, kind of also counts as a second copy of this. So I can cut one of those. That's fine. Um, I want to get size one. I do have Commander Brandy who can kind of pull it. And I think that's really it. But then if I have Commander Brandy, it's kind of like I have three copies of this, which is probably overkill. I probably would rather just play a second copy of Major Meander than a second copy of the ship. Because if I do eventually get out combat response, I can reveal either the pilot or the ship. And if I do have to forfeit something at a system, I'd rather just forfeit the pilot because it's going to have more power because the ship... Like, I won't necessarily have a second ship, and then I'd have to put him, like, on side three or just piloting a victory class star shore, which you won't add any power. And I'd probably lose my weapon, so I'd rather just sack him and then the next turn just replay him as a pilot on the ship and just be back at full capacity. So um, I'll probably cut one of these cards. Probably cut a copy of because i'm probably starting you cannot hide forever just for numbers insurance and not oppressive enforcement i'll probably play just two grabbers um i'm going to cut down to one copy of sense because there's just going to be games where like all my characters are ability two and i'm not going to draw one there's not very many ones in this deck like assuming that my sights are all out I have one one in Blizzard Walker here. And that's it. One one in a gick. So like it's gonna be kind of hard to sense. So I'm gonna cut a copy of sense. Probably still gonna cut this copy of um counter assault just because there could also just be a time where I draw like two 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 two. 
three and I'm, you know, power nine. And you were like power eight. And I still lose a card. But now I've also lost the counter assault. So I really, in effect, lost two cards. So I'll probably cut this counter assault. Probably going to cut this control as well. It's low destiny. I'm not super worried about sense and alter. Um, I have a grabber for sensor alter if I need to, and I would just have to really time my copy of sense well. Um, yeah, I'm going to cut control. What else has a low destiny? Monarch and Gick, but I can pull them with. Like, I really want Monarch and I really want Gick. Um, maybe Voyeur. It's good, but it's not like the end all be all and i'll probably actually cut one talent roll even though i've been talking about it and talking about it and talking about it mostly what we're going to be doing is shooting during the move phase talent rolls just icing on the top and since i cut one of the ties i only have two ties left anymore i don't need two copies of talent roll so we'll cut one talent roll here because I'm down to two ties, Pride of the Empire is a little bit harder, especially if they're really heavy ground deck. Like, I'm never going to have a chance to really play Pride of the Empire, so I'll probably actually just cut that. Um, I'm going to cut Search and Destroy. It's a really good card, but if I'm playing against a dedicated space deck, I only have one Battleground site, so I'm not going to be able to even fulfill the other part of Search and Destroy. And if they're on giving me ground sites that I can go to to set up Search and Destroy, I feel like they're just going to be able to come down and battle me again or battle me off their site. And then where did I really, what did I really get? You know, nothing. So I'm going to cut Search and Destroy here. And we're at 60 cards. So that was 12. So this is kind of the final deck that we have built um so we'll probably give it a spin maybe i'll try and record some videos of me playing this or i'll play it and then just like kind of redo the replay and talk through my strategy of what i did not completely sold on this tech more but he is a destiny six like that might just become the other major meander or, you know, I could double up on a DS-61-2 or a Cabell or an Evax even. Um, for right now, I'll leave it as Destiny 6. But, you know, overall, this doesn't look terrible. Um, pretty good with this, I think. So let's save it. And we'll call it a day. So thank you very much for sitting through deck building process. And we'll do a third part, which is going to be some games. And maybe we'll do a fourth part, which is some other decks that we could play. Like I've been talking about the speeder bike deck. I've been talking about the Imperial Academy training, an entire legion of my best troops deck. Um, you know, so we'll, we'll look into it. But uh, otherwise, thank you very much. It was a pleasure. And have a good day.